Just a quick disclaimer, this will be a longer video. Um, I'm, hope, I'm hoping all of your guys' moms are having a, a great Mother's Day. Um, you, can, you guys, of course, can watch the video whenever, so make sure you grab your snacks, drinks, popcorn, um, barbecue if you're having a barbecue out there. And let's get this video started. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And this article is straight from T-Mobile's newsroom. Uh, most of you that follow the channel have seen it. This is the announcement of the T-Mobile and EQT joint venture to acquire Lumos. We know 50% T-Mobile has a 50% stake in that. So this was the original announcement. So this is the tough video that I, that I, that I had to make. I had to get this out the way. So the next phase of T-Mobile is going to look a whole lot different. I've already stated in plenty of videos, the uncarrier is done. And a lot of you have acknowledged that in the comments. But now, right, we move on to the, to the tough part, the, the, the price increases, the price going up. And the reason that's the next phase, and, and it's not going to happen by the end of the year in terms of where T-Mobile is really going, right? We will still get price increases inside of this calendar year, but there's more to come. 2025, 2026, and the reason that is, is because now T-Mobile has to defend its position and they really have to defend it. And the only way that they can defend it competitively, be able to compete in future spectrum auctions, if there's another, I don't know, fiber player, a bigger fiber player that they want to buy that's not capital light, they have to improve margins. They have to have a bigger buying power. And the only way that they can do that today, they have to increase pricing on the legacy base. Their, their current pricing on the current plans, the, the Go 5G, the, the, the Go 5G Next, that is right in line and very competitive with Verizon pricing and even AT&T. Who would have ever thought that T-Mobile would charge $100 for one line on any plan that they ever launched? Nobody would have ever, if you would have asked me that five years ago, I would have said you were crazy. But it's, it's, it's a thing. You can go on tmobile.com, you can select plans, and you will see Go 5G Next is $100 for one line. Now, of course, that's an option. It comes with its own value and perks. You get to upgrade every year. You get to take advantage of promotions, even if you are an existing customer. So that's good and, that's good and all. But... You can clearly see t mobile is, they're not money hungry, but they have to now have leverage and more higher margins because there isn't another bigger player for them to buy like when they bought Sprint that got them tons of spectrum. Even if they got, and I'm speculating, even if they got all of US Cellular, it still wouldn't be a big deal. There just isn't another player that they can gobble up to get more spectrum. So what does that mean? In the next Spectrum auction, if it's a bidding auction, depending on the rules, they are going to have to compete with money. That's the only way. And they got to be able to compete fiercely and they got to be able to get what they, what they want to get out of it. And the only way for them to do that is to improve the finances. They have to improve. If not, at and and Verizon are going to eat them alive. So the next phase of T-Mobile is going to be tough. And I'm, I'm preparing you guys with these videos. If you're a legacy T-Mobile customer on Simple Choice, T-Mobile One, whatever plan you're on, get ready. And you can't say that I didn't prepare you. I am preparing you guys. And, and you guys should see that yourself. You know, you don't have to... You don't have to have me tell you that your pricing is going up. I think you guys are fully understanding of what's about to come. And that's just, that's the price of competition. That's why there's choice. You can choose an MVNO. You can choose a cable player. You don't have to be on any, on any MNO to have cellular service. You don't have to be. You can choose visible. You can choose a uh, cable player. You can choose... I mean, tons of options, Mobile X, Straight Talk. I mean, there's tons of options out there where you don't have to be on a mobile network operator. 
You can still use their network through the MVNOs, but there's choice out there. But the mobile network operators are going to adjust inflation rates, whatever you want to say. They are going to adjust to compete. And T-Mobile is going to start doing the same. Charter slash Spectrum recently in increased their free line pricing and their churn hardly went up. Verizon raised prices and, and T-Mobile's churn was only better by three basis points. So T-Mobile is looking at that like, okay, uh, I'm going to raise my price too. And they're going to do it. That is the harsh, honest truth from me to you. T-Mobile is going to raise pricing on legacy customers. They can't do it on the newer plans because they're already priced high. What are they going to do? Uh, uh, raise the price of the Go 5G Next to 110? I mean, at that point, they are by far the most expensive player in the game. The ultimate, the unlimited ultimate from, from, from Verizon is still $100 for one line plus tax. So that's what's saving T-Mobile right now on not being the most expensive. T-Mobile includes taxes and fees. But if they raise the line price of that plan, man, they're going to be the most expensive player in the game today. So you have to take all of that into consideration. You got to take the operations costs into consideration. T-Mobile is now a bigger network. And in order for them to continue to operate and fuel the network, they got to spend on spectrum. And if they don't raise prices and their margins don't increase, well, guess what? They can't compete as freely as they would like to in any future spectrum auction. They are going to be beat by the competition and they're going to end up with the least amount of spectrum at those auctions because they can't just buy a player anymore like they did with Sprint. They're now going to have to compete fiercely for more spectrum. And that's the problem. That's why a lot of people are going to have mixed messaging on this, right? Some are mixed opinions. Some are going to say, yes, we need T-Mobile to have better margins so they can compete. And some are going to say, I, I don't care what they do. I'm never going to go to T-Mobile. So, you know, there's going to be those parties out there, but in order for them to compete, like I said, they have to get their money up. They have to do it. And that is the, like I said, that is the honest truth. And there's no other way to do it. They're not moving the legacy base to newer plans effective enough. I have been told that internally. That's why they were trying to move grandfathered plans onto newer plans like forced migrations that backfired. I'm told it's it's a very low single digit percentage of them moving legacy customers onto new plans. It's almost uh, non-existent. That's how little they're migrating people onto newer plans. People are set on their old plans. The network got better for that same customer and they're still paying 80 bucks for 12 lines. Don't work like that. And T-Mobile knows it. So I think what they're what they plan on doing they're going to raise pricing very soon. They're going to do it one time, but they're going to make it very effective. I would not be surprised if it's like a 5 or $6 increase per line. It's going to be effective. They are going to take the hit this one time. I think they have to do it. So they're going to bite the sour apple. I do think they're going to create a churn bubble here. I think it will go above 1%, but then I think it will level off eventually. I think they will have a ton of customers that will leave. Some will stay, but I think a good amount will leave. And I think this one time they do take that hit to create those higher margins. We don't know the how the government is going to is going to swing in this in this election. This is the election year. We don't know what happens. We don't know how quickly the government makes spectrum available. Let's just say next year there's an auction T-Mobile already has to have their ducks lined up to be able to compete for that. And, uh, and I'm just saying a what if. I don't think that'll happen, but what if? Hey, uh, October of 2025, there's an auction. T-Mobile has to be ready to compete in those auctions fiercely. They can no longer half do, do the half-ass thing. That, that's not going to work because they can't gobble up another sprint like they did in 2020. So then the next part also to this now, the whole capital light model. They're going capital light right now on fiber, 
because they really can't afford to go any higher because of their situation financially. And I'm not saying that it's a it's a dire situation that they're in any trouble. They they're making a lot of money. But there's a lot of moving parts to that making money. They're spreading it out now. They're paying dividends. They're paying they're paying buybacks. They they still have to do a $16 billion free cash flow. The moment that they go bigger, right? The free cash flow goes down, CapEx has to go up. They take on more debt onto the balance sheet. That throws off everything, and that will hurt the stock. So they have to do it very smart. So before they, they, they signal that a bigger play is coming on fiber, they have to get the finances right. So that's where the price increases come into play. They will let that settle in for a couple of quarters, and then we will start seeing the service revenue, the, the benefits, right? $20 billion free cash flow. And that's when I think they pull the trigger on a bigger fiber player. Because this whole JV partnership, they would have to buy so many little ones and i don't know how many are out there that eventually even that will total up to one big lump sum so why not just go out and buy a bigger player like a frontier or i don't know google fiber if those assets ever go up in parts but again t-mobile has to be financially ready to do that because now they're in fiber right so they have to potentially start spending splitting capital on fiber and wireless. Wireless is clearly still their priority. That's like 99.9% of, of all of the revenue that they make because they're a pure wireless play. Today, they don't own or operate any fiber. They don't even have a wireline business. So you can't just start saying, oh, I'm gonna spend $7 billion on fiber and starve wireless when wireless is your main, like your main growth engine. With Verizon and AT&T, it's, it's, it's a little more balanced, especially with AT&T. They make a ton of revenue off of fiber. T-Mobile doesn't have that luxury today. So in order for T-Mobile to maintain, to grow, to increase margins, to dabble into fiber, they have to do it off of the back and power of their wireless asset. And that's going to be the customer. The customer has to feel comfortable enough that the network for one is, is now like drastically better, that they're willing to pay more, get more value out of T-Mobile, and all of that has to line up. And I think T-Mobile thinks that they're ready to now do that on the wireless side. They now think that their network is big enough, that it's, it's good enough in the urban core for them to start implementing the price increase. And once that happens, their finances are going to get much better. But still in all, there's still a limit, right? There's only so much that they can raise price for the legacy customer. So are they going to have to do it again in the future sometime, two, three years from now? It's quite possible. It is a possibility that they are going to have to raise price again on legacy customers two, three years from now. So they could potentially introduce new pricing in the future with higher price, uh, price points. That makes the Go 5G plans a legacy, right? Increase those. Th those are just possibilities, but that's the only way for T-Mobile to move forward. They can no longer operate at this lower capex, at this low, at these lower margins, because now they have to compete on everything. There is no other bigger player for them to buy. Let's let's get that out of the way. Once once US Cellular goes up in parts which I truly believe the FCC will only let U.S. Cellular be purchased in parts. No one player is going to own all of it. That's pretty much it. Every, every other regional player has a LTE roaming agreement with Verizon assets like Viero. That's, that's just not going to work for T-Mobile. The only other player that they can strike this type of deal with is U.S. Cellular, and it's, it's not going to be that big of a magnitude. So now T-Mobile for the second phase, right, heading into 20, 20, the end of 24, 25, 26, as we finish out the decade, T-Mobile will have to get better financially, much, much stronger. And it's, it's already showing now. They're getting there, but they got to do more. They got to be able to be in a position, and hear me out, they got to be able to be in a position to spend $15, 16 $17 billion annually CapEx 
be able to still operate, right? Pay the operations cost. And still at that at, at that point when the when the CapEx is like that, still be able to purchase Spectrum, uh, a, a fiber player, um, and other assets, right? Other other corporate assets like dividend payouts, buybacks. They still have to do all of that while increasing their operations and CapEx significantly. And the only way they do that, they have to bring margins closer to what Verizon and AT&T are doing today. And I think it's coming. I think it's on the way. You know, I'm, I'm always in the back, behind the scenes. I'm hearing stuff. You guys see me on X. I know some stuff that I, you know, there's there's documents out there. They're watermarked now for T-Mobile. Dealers got a new NDA uh, non-disclosure agreement. So it's, it's going to be a little bit tougher, but we will still get the info just off of credibility alone. You guys have followed my channel for years. If I tell you guys like, hey, this is official, I can't show you the doc, the document, but if I tell you a price increase is coming, it's coming. I'm not just, you know, I, I'll still have to say it's unofficial, but if, I, if, if, if it's that time, I will let you guys know, especially members. Members get that all, they, they get that info before anyone. So... You know, that's that's what we're looking forward to, a more expensive T-Mobile. And they will still push the value. And like I said, value doesn't come from the cheaper price at times. It's it's everything. It's it's what you present. It's it's what you offer. And that's why T-Mobile, have, what have they been doing? They've increased the streaming. They they entered in uh, the, the, the T-Life app, the Magenta status. And they're claiming all of that is, is huge value. And then they, they, they want to drop this price increase very soon. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you're okay with T-Mobile charging more to be more competitive at auctions, which is, of course, going to result in a better network, fuel the network for future, for future I don't know, partnerships, FWA, uh, better mobile speeds, you name it. It's all going to be fueled by Spectrum. And then, of course, the fiber. And then in the future, T-Mobile eventually wants to own their own fiber, do fiber to the cell, fiber to the home. But the only way they can do that today is to charge more and make more money. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe if you are new. Follow my social media outlets. This is Tyrone with Tech Life, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.